In this video, we're going to talk about using an if-else versus using a switch in Java. A typical thing that comes up when you're writing code is some sort of conditional statement. So in this case, suppose the user enters a number, and then depending on what number they enter, you're going to print a different thing. So if they enter a 1, you print, you enter a 1. If they enter a 2, you print deuces wild. If they enter a 5, you print 5 and 10. And then in all other cases, you print the number that they entered. One way we could solve this is with an if-else statement. So for each of the conditions, and there's four conditions, we have a statement that lines up with that condition. So here, we can check if the number is one, then we print you entered a one, else, meaning if that first condition didn't hold, else if num is equal to two, we print deuce is wild, and then if that condition doesn't hold, else if num equals five, we print five and 10, and then the else clause handles the otherwise case. In every case that doesn't match one of the conditions above, we'll print you entered and then that number. And this is a pretty common structure for an if statement. You may say, do we really need the else's here? And in fact, in this case we do, because if we just said if num equals one, if num equals two, if num equals five, then if we had if num equals five, the else condition would match all cases that don't match five. So if the user entered a one, it would say you entered a one, but it would also say you entered the number one, the else condition would hold. So you wanna think about how to structure your else statements so that they'll only match the conditions that you intend. Now, another way to do this would be with a switch statement. And here we switch on the variable, and then we add a case for each of our conditional statements. In the case that num is equal to one, we say you entered a one. In the case that num is equal to two, we say deuce is wild. In the case that num is equal to five, we print five and 10. And then to handle the otherwise case in a switch, we use a default. Now, just like before with our if statement, we wanna have some way of saying once a condition holds, we don't wanna do anything else. And the break that you see in the three case statements those all tell Java that we're done handling the case. Go ahead and get out of the switch because we're done. If none of the cases match, then the default case would be executed and we would print you entered whatever number they entered. So here we can see how the two conditional statements are actually very similar. There's some syntax differences, of course, but the way we structure them is very similar because they represent similar logic. So anytime you have one of these if else structures that you see on the left, you can replace it with a switch statement like we see on the right, assuming the only thing you care about is the actual value of the variable. Switch statements don't work in situations where we wanna say if num is less than zero, print negative, if it's equal to zero, print zero, and if it's greater than zero, print positive, or something like that. That wouldn't work with a switch statement because with a switch statement, you have to give it an exact case for each thing you're looking for. Now, outside of the print line statement, all of the syntax is valid in a language like C and other languages, although the way they work may be slightly different. And of course, which one is better really boils down to your personal preference. There may be some slight performance differences depending on the specific compiler you're using, but for purposes of an introductory course, those considerations are something you don't need to worry about at this point. 